I'm not actually um, Imogene O'Riordan. Um, I'm Anna McCrory. Uh, I work. <laughs> so, sorry about that. <laughs> and my name. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is even harder to pronounce, for, even for people in Scotland. So really, don't worry about it. Um, I am the museum's officer for the Scottish Archaeological Research Framework, and I uh, worked with Emma during her tenure as SCARF project manager. Um, until she left the post in April this year to be uh, followed on by Helen Spencer, who's here today as well. Um, so what I'm, I'm delivering this on Emma's behalf because she's not able to be here. So what follows are her reflections and perspectives from her time as SCARF project manager. So um, this point, not very subtly, is making the case for Scotland being part of Europe. Um, not all of us were in favour of a significant vote that happened to, to, uh, two years ago. Um, and just to put it into context, um, SCARF is based there just in Edinburgh in Scotland, so in the north of Europe. Um, so there's been lots of reference to SCARF throughout the day, which has been great because it's really good to know that it's at the forefront of everybody's mind. But um, just for um, a bit, just for, for it to come from us, from the SCARF project really, is to show that the content is. Um, peer-reviewed and um, authored by top minds in the field. Um, it launched in 2012 as a set of reports and questions split by period from the Paleolithic to the present day, so it's coming up to um, the World Wars. Over 350 archaeologists and others contributed texts and images and ultimately produced hundreds of research questions about all aspects of Scottish archaeology. The resource was seen as really new and exciting at the time that it was launched, uh, given that it was first of its kind for Scotland and the first in the UK to be published as open access website only and not in any kind of hard copy whatsoever. So it was seen as really nice, new and shiny for any Disney fans. Um, over time, SCARF has become embedded in Scottish archaeology with references to it popping up in academic papers, commercial reports and elsewhere, including um, some national school level uh, exam, exam papers. In 2018, it has become commonplace to refer to SCARF. The bright young thing has become part of the establishment. So much so that um, SCARF is one of the lead bodies for delivering AIM 2.1.3 of Scotland's archaeology strategy, which has also been referenced here today as well. So as I say, very much part of the archaeology establishment of Scotland now. So we've heard a lot from um, colleagues about uh, from other parts of, of the UK, and this is just to put SCARF into that wider context again. We have one national framework um, and four uh, regional frameworks, three of which are in progress today, like the one that we heard Becky talk about just earlier, and World Heritage Site frameworks as well. Um, this is, of course, just an overview, so there are a few variations within that, but um, it helps put it into the context of the UK as a whole. Um, Oh, sorry, it's doing it automatically, it's frustrating. Um, there hasn't been any overarching strategy um, of the research work being carried out, hence the variation between the different... Um, hence hence the, the difference in Scotland to the other areas. Significant dif differences persist between the manner in which research frameworks have been initiated, who's delivering them, delivering them how the findings are or results are being disseminated, and crucially, how they might be updated going forward. Um, yes. So here, um, oh, sorry, it's really, really frustrating. Um, no. Um, now, there's a lot of text on this table, and I won't ask you to try and take it all in just now, but really this is just to emphasize the difference um, from these research frameworks at the top here and thank you for the updated title, Becky, because I realise that we have um, I've misreferenced your research framework there. I've called it by the old title, but it's a surf project, or uh, as was our islands, our past. But this table is really just to emphasise the differences between each of the regional frameworks that are, are either completed, such as our guy on Butte in the furthest left, left column, and um, the and the differences between each of the ones, including those which are um, underway at the moment. The differences include the funding and funding resources, the number and the type of people involved um, in the consultation and creation, method of dissemination, um, some of which are yet to be decided even for projects currently underway, and again, the means of updating in the future. Um, so as you can see, huge variety in all kinds of figures, whether it be um, people, 
um, time taken, time um, allotted for the production, funding costs, and also the dissemination of them as well. Um, so just to focus a little bit on um, RARFA, the Regional Archaeological Research Framework for Argyle, um, this little uh, infographic nicely summarises some of the content that went into it, um, and this chart on the bottom right shows the content map of the framework as it is um, on SCARF. This will hopefully help put it into context slightly, realising that Regional frameworks can be somewhat meaningless if you're not familiar with the kind of wider context of what it is that we're talking about. Um, and it also gives a pretty clear indication of just how much work was involved. And this is for what is a relatively um, small part of Scotland. I mean, it still covers the big landmass, but it's not um, a huge, massive geographic area. Um, yes. And a bit more detail here on the amount of data that we were dealing with in, in RARFA. Um, and as I say, it's just one geographic area, but the numbers here can speak for themselves. Um, Canmore, which is uh, referenced in the bottom left um, graph there, if anybody who isn't aware of it, is the National Database of the Historic Environment of Scotland. And that references individual sites and archive material. That's something that we're exceptionally lucky to have in Scotland, which I realise that not all countries are fortunate enough to have, and it's a huge benefit of this kind of work. What's interesting here is you'll notice in the case studies, um, this is a way that we see as being um, an easy way to update sc national scarf going forward, and that's, we've been saying about it for a while, but even in a relatively newly undertaken uh, research framework, there's still huge disparities between number of case studies depending on, um, on chapter and so on and so forth, even though that can be a nice sort of bite-sized piece of work for people to do. So um, another one where there's lots and lots of text here, but again, just to give an indication of the amount of work that was um, undertaken by SCARF staff during the creation of this. So this wasn't even any of the work which um, the museum body undertook themselves, but rather just SCARF staff time. Um, it's a huge amount of work. Um, some points to consider are might be things... I've skipped one there. Funding, as I indicated, each of the current research frameworks are, um, are hugely variable um, and all sorts of different issues that come as part of that. Contributors, um, I like the reference there to strong personalities. That's certainly something that we have come across in SCARF ourselves in different ways and always will going forward. And it's hard if you're in a field with a lot of established experts, but how do we get those, those new contributors and experts coming up and getting their voices heard too? Publication always a tricky one. Hard copy versus digital, one only, both. Different sort of reasoning and desires for either as well. And of course the time and the cost that those required as well. Um, CESHARF has been mentioned, so I won't go into this too much, but um, it is a partnership project. It's uh, been contracted out to a commercial organisation to um, to deliver, but has very much had um, the local authority archaeologists working on that. Um, I'll just catch up with myself here. And thank you to Dan for this, which is um, a portal which is being used or being developed. This is the back end of it, um, as of a few days ago, um, upon which uh, material will be made available following the CESAR project. So, a different way of disseminating the information compared to any of the other research frameworks we've been happening. So, some conclusions. A lot of these are things which you'll be uh, have been covered already. That um, so it's not necessarily something that we need to go into too much just now, but lots of things to think about. And for external people, I think the museum's reference was for my benefit there because I'm a museum's person at heart. But again, these are all things which um, people who are involved in research streamers will have come across before publication. Images, we can make things look good as well as read well too, with a bit of extra consideration. So this was Emma's point that, you know, we're here, we're working in Edinburgh, but really we're part of a much wider world. Why can't we connect our research and do things which are really, really well linked up together? So thank you. Um, that's it.